Hi everyone and welcome back to the New Age of Jesus Diaries. I hope you're all well. Today I am back with a video and it's going to be a bit different today. I'm going to share some lessons that I learned from the book of Esther. And the reason why I wanted to do this one because I've got like a little soft spot for the book of Esther just because when I come from the New Age I had this um I had this like view that the Bible spoke really sort of badly of women and it put women down and all this kind of patriarchal stuff. And um, the book of Esther was the first book I read. Um, well, there are other books, but it was the first book I read where I actually realised that that's not actually true. Um, for one, there's a whole book on <laughs> called the book of Esther, um, who is a woman in the Bible. And it's also a woman that God uses in, um, uh, in big ways, um, for his, for his purpose. Um, so I just wanted to share some things that I learn, um, and that I've actually seen play out in my own life. Um, that I got from the Book of Esther. So I'm not going to go through um, the whole storyline of the Book of Esther because one, the whole point is to inspire you to read it and two, um, you, you can read it in like one session. It's not like one where you have to start, like you, you could read the Book of Esther in one session, easy. Um, so yeah, please do read the Book of Esther for yourself. Um, and also please share any lessons that you um, have learnt from the book of Esther. I'd be really pleased to hear those as well. Um, so yeah, just share in the comments if there's anything that um, you've got personally from, from this book. So the first thing that I learnt from the book of Esther is God is always at work. And this I learnt at the start of my journey and it's really, really carried me through um, with my faith journey. And one of the reasons why I first read the book of Esther is because I actually heard it's one of the only books in the Bible. I think it's like Songs of Solomon as well, if I recall, um, that God is not mentioned in the book. So throughout the whole book of Esther, there is no mention of God in the book. Now, that's what actually led me to actually read Esther. And it was just so beautiful because I kind of had that in mind as I was reading it. And the fact that God uses Esther in such a big way to save the people and um, to save his people. And that's just a reminder, like there doesn't have to be any sig significant things happening in our life to know that God is working behind the scenes. Because there's no mention of God in the book of Esther, but it's so clear that he's working behind the scenes. He's he's making divine appointments, he's working behind the scenes, he's working in situations and he's working through Esther and he's working through other people and through the situation. He's in the midst of it and it's just so clear um, and you can see that it's his purpose that is being achieved throughout the whole book but yet um, it's there's no mention, there's no mention of him and I think it's just beautiful because when I, when I read it through those eyes um, I kind of you know, through that lens, I mean, I kind of realised, like, we don't have to, like, when we feel God is not there, um, he's still working, he's still working, and that's just the beauty of it, that's, that's the beauty, um, so that's, that's a really good lesson that sort of carried me through, that even if I feel God's not working in my life, he is. Even if I feel that I'm not being of use or I'm not doing the right thing or I'm not doing this or I'm not doing that or that's not going right or like God is working. He's working in all things, in all situations, always, always at work behind the scenes. So my job is just to keep my eyes on the Lord and follow him. And I know that he is, he is at work. So the second thing I learned from the book of Esther is our power um, is in our faith in the Lord. That is where our power is found, in our faith in the Lord. But faith in the Lord is, I don't know how this is going to happen. <laughs> I don't know what's, a, I, I don't know how the Lord's going to work it out, but I believe in the Lord and I believe in the goodness of God. Um, and I believe he will deliver me from this situation and deliver his people from this situation. And how I kind of learned this from, um, from the book of Esther is, when Esther decides to, because um, she, she has some fear at first, um, because there's some risks involved for her 
helping and, and saving the people. Um, potentially, she's, she's risking her own life. And what she, um, when she does decide, she makes that decision, I'm going to do this. Um, what the first thing that she does is she gets everyone to fast. So she says to Mordecai, go tell the Jewish people to fast. Everyone fast. Don't eat or drink for three days. And she, she will do the same, basically. And what this actually signifies is like she completely gives it up to God. So it wasn't like she agreed to, to do this to help the Jewish people and then she devised some plan. What she did is she decided, yes, I'm going to do this. Um, and then she gave the complete situation to God by completely surrendering everything. Um, and that's why we fast, right? It's when we, when we give it up to God, we're just like, I don't know what to do. This is, you know, I'm trying to do this on my own strength. I need you to take over and completely take control. And that is why we fast and give it to God. And that is what she did. And that takes so much faith in a situation that takes so much faith. Could you imagine like the fear that was going through her, like all the, the, the things that she wanted to do and how she wanted to do it and everything like that. But what she decided to do, the first thing that she said is, I'm going to fast, I need you to fast. So the third thing that I learned from the book of Esther is it is going to take courage to follow the Lord. And I, I massively learned this from the book of Esther. And that's probably why, like one of the reasons why I connected with it so much, because there's a lot of fear involved to what she's got to do. And she's essentially risking her own life. So she needs to go and speak to the king, but you can't go and speak to the king unless you're called. And she has not seen the king, who she is married to, but she has not seen him. He's not called for her for 30 days. So you've got to think, how much fear would that bring in? Because if, you, if you've not been called for for 30 days, you would think, well, what's the king thinking? He hasn't wanted to see me for 30 days. So it's not as if the relationship was obviously in a in a good place I would say like she probably wasn't very secure with where she was with the king because she's not seen him for 30 days so in order for her to to um go and speak to him she needs to basically break the law which potentially the penalty for that was death obviously that does not happen but at the same time potentially that could have happened so I think she says like the words that she says is if I perish, I perish. So she agrees to help the Jewish people and the words out of her mouth are, if I perish, I perish. So it's, that's so much courage to say, I'm, I'm going to do this um, and the consequences might not be good for me. Um, I, may re I, I may not live, but if I perish, I perish because I'm going to do it anyway and I'm going to follow the Lord. So it's, it's just a really good lesson to learn that, you know, when the Lord asks us to do something, there is going to be fear there. There is, because if he's asking us to do something, we're going to be doing something on his strength and not ours, which normally means we're not capable of doing it on our own. But because we're stuck in our own stuff, <laughs> we will think that we will look at our own limitations and capabilities and see that we probably can't do it, which then brings up the th fear. So, um, I think it's just, it's good to rest in that comfort that if the law's asking you to do something, if you are feeling fear, then that is completely normal because it's going to take courage to follow the Lord. So the fourth thing that I learned from the book of Esther is we all have a Haman heart. Now, Haman is the kind of bad guy um, in the book of Esther. So he's the one that is actually... Um, causing trouble, basically. Um, and he's the one that actually um, is a main instigator to why the Jewish people are in trouble anyway um, and at risk. So it's really interesting because I actually learned this through um, a sermon. I went to a church sermon and the pastor at the time was preaching on the Haman heart and how when we read the book of Esther, we, we don't connect with Haman at all. And we're like, oh, what a horrible person and all this kind of thing. But he actually said, we all have some Haman in our heart. And we did all did a prayer um, for us to see the Haman, our Haman hearts, basically. And the week following that, 
I got shown my the, the Heyman side of my heart. I, I actually saw um, a part of myself that was not nice. Um, and it was just, yeah, I, again, part of sanctification process. Um, so it's really interesting to know that even though we all connect with Esther a bit, don't we? Because, you know, it, it's such a, a great story. Um, and I think as women that are reading it, that really want to be used by God, um, it can be really inspiring. Um, and we disconnect with Haman so much that, you know, it's all about Esther. But sometimes we have to think, you know, we're sometimes we are not immune from um, falling into Haman ways at times because um, because of our nature. That's a bit of a hard one to take. And it was for me a hard one to swallow. But, you know, you can always pray to see your home and heart. <laughs> And the Lord will reveal it to you. And no matter what happens, it will only sanctify you and make you better like Jesus once you can see um, if there is, if, if you've got any Haman in your heart. <laughs> and those kind of prayers are really healthy to do because it just brings more awareness to the surface. And sometimes we can, you know, we, we, we can't always see ourselves fully. Um, so, you know, it's it's sometimes refreshing when you do go to sermons and you do do prayers like that because... Um, it, it can just really bring stuff to the surface that you're not seeing. And last but not least, we are to use our influence for good. Now, Esther was chosen, um, I'm not going to say completely, but um, a, a large um, reason why Esther was chosen to become queen was largely to do with her looks. So she was obviously, um, it actually says that she had a, an amazing, um, she was beautiful, basically. And she was she she became queen and her looks was something to do with that like it was she she got into that position um because her looks were influential now she could have got in the position of queen and then um decided not to help the jewish people and stay in the comfort of being the queen but she realized that god had put her in that position of influence and then how she can use that influence for good and it's just a reminder because sometimes God will put us in a position of influence, whether that's in a conversation, on a platform or in a church setting. That there's, there's many different ways that we will be in a position of influence. I mean, if you've got children, even a position of influence with our children. And it's always that reminder that whatever, wherever we're placed and wherever we're put and wherever God works us, then we are to use that position that we are given for an influence of good because we all have the potential to use our influence to have a, a, a maybe a not so good um, impact on people. So it's, it's how do we use the gifts that we have um, and the influence we have to help others for the good of others. Um, and yeah, that's, one of the things that I learned from Esther as well. And there is more that I've learned from the book of Esther. It's an amazing book. I really encourage you to read it. Please do share of any that you've learned or any sort of realizations or um, in any way that the book of Esther has really impacted your life. Um, I'd be really pleased to hear that as well. I hope you're all well. And yeah, I just pray that this has blessed you. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.